Well, I'm Kenny Lowry, and today we're just going to kind of go over some tips and care and usage, general questions that people ask me uh, for, through the years after they've had their fountain for years. Uh, this fountain here has been, and we'll try to cover boulders and jars. So this jar is the first disappearing fountain that we installed here about 15 years ago. Uh, it's been running ever since, has a heater in the basin, so it runs in the winter. We've had pictures of it with snow up to here on it, um, and we have that heater so it keeps it from freezing. Now, once you put a heater in the basin, you're going to need to run that 24-7 uh, because even though that heater's got a thermostat on it that kicks on when the water's 35 degrees, you need to keep that 35 degree water turning up through your jar. So if you turn it off at night, then you're not transferring that water. So you do have to run it. Uh, at that point, you're going to run it 24-7. Another thing to look for in the winter, a lot of people have this question too. Uh, they'll say uh, they think they have a hole in their basin. I've never had a basin have a hole in it. I've had people have their fountains for years. They'll call me and say they think they need a new basin. Uh, I always tell them, no, you don't. That's my first response. I've never had a basin uh, that had a hole in it. What they'll mistake that for a lot of time is that plume of water there, especially if it's windy, the wind will blow that plume out. Uh, so they'll start losing water a lot quicker than they normally do, so they'll think it's a hole. Another thing is debris, and this is what it most commonly is. Uh, after a while, you'll get enough debris on top of your basin. Uh, so you'll have to, and that'll plug, clog up those holes that are in that screen and won't allow the water to pass back through. So what the water does then is it comes on top of the screen and then runs out of the basin. So what you do is you remove the rocks, put them in a wheelbarrow, let them dry out. And this is the best way to do it. Trust me, I've been doing this 20 years. Uh, this is the best way to do it. Let them dry out, take a leaf blower, blow the debris out, turn them over with a shovel, blow the debris out, turn them over with a shovel, blow the debris out. Just keep doing that. The last thing you can do is wash them. Uh, if you wash them right away, it's just gonna cause the debris to stick to the rocks. You're not gonna get it out of there. You have to wash them each rock individually. It's a lot easier to do it in a wheelbarrow with a leaf blower and blow the debris out that way. Um, also, after that long of running, uh, you might get kind of a scale buildup, mineral deposits. Now, this jar's been here 15 years, been running 15 years, and in that 15 years, we've probably got two hours worth of maintenance. Uh, if you turn this off and let it dry off, it's gonna be full of calcium deposits. They don't show up when it's wet, so it kind of goes away when it's wet. If you want to try to clean that, you can use that, uh, I think it's called CLR, you can, you can use that uh, to, to get some of it off of there, but I, this jar, I've just let it run all that time. I don't think it's, a, it's an unsightly thing. Now, if it were dried out, it would be, but uh, with the water running over, it's not. A basin cleaning. If you wanted to, you can clean this basin. This basin's never been cleaned. It's been here 15 years. Directly under a crepe myrtle tree, messy tree you can put in your yard. Beautiful tree, but messy tree. Drops blooms and leaves, seeds all the time. Uh, if you wanted to, you could clean this. It's probably a couple of inches of sludge in the bottom of this after 15 years. Uh, and that sludge, sludge is settled, so it really doesn't become an issue. In that 15 years, that two hours worth of maintenance is clean the intake on the pump. So you have to take, uh, that debris will finally work its way through the screen. And I just basically pull the rocks away, lift out the panel for your pump access, grab the debris and just throw it out. Have to do that about once a year. The first time we installed it, well, you only had to do it after about the third or fourth year. But now it's a yearly thing. Enough of that debris is getting there. We have to clean the pump up. It takes about two or three minutes. So fill it up. We fill it up with a garden hose. A lot of people want to know how much to fill it up. We fill it up until it's completely full. You can top it off if you want, uh, but we fill it up until it's actually running over and then we turn it off. We need to use a garden hose to do that. You can actually use an automatic fill, kind of works like a miniature float on your toilet. We do sell those and they mount into your basin and you can use that, uh, but we just have so many fountains here, we just pull the garden hose around. Uh, mostly when we lose water is the wind blowing that plume. It's not evaporation, it's the wind blowing the plume of water. In the winter time, we turn that plume down so that it has less apt to catch that because wind is when we, we get more of that in the winter than the other time. Uh, cleaning the jar, a lot of people want to know, if you use your Fountech, the water added to keep the water clear, one drop per gallon per week. Uh, you don't have to use full dosage. You can use about half or three-quarter dosage. So depending on the gallons is how much, you, how much you're going to use. Um, if you don't use it, the water's still going to stay clear most of the time, but you'll get algae buildup on the fountain feed yourself. On these jars, to clean it, soft bristled brush, uh, what we'll do is use it as just a burlap bag, and we'll wipe it off. It comes right off. Glaze is melted glass, so it's not, it doesn't stick on there very well. So we just kind of wipe it off. If you got a boulder or something like that, turn the fountain off, let it dry out. When it dries out, it'll kill the algae. 
Uh, you can still use a soft bristle brush if you want, but we find to just uh, turn it off, let it dry out. And you take a leaf blower, or if you want to do a pressure washer, but a leaf blower and kind of blow it off, blow the dry debris off. Um, I'm looking at some cheat notes here, because these are questions I get asked a lot. Um, covered most of that. How do you know when it needs water? Uh, if you see your plum, plume of water going down to about, you know, less than it normally is, you probably either need water or you need to clean the intake on that pump. Uh, if you see air bubbles in your water, uh, that probably is telling you again, you need to add water. Uh, that's what I do. I'm, my eyes are tuned to this. When I walk around here, if I see a fountain not running the way it's supposed to, I know it needs water or it needs to clean the in, intake on the pump. So uh, look for those kinds of things. Uh, don't run your pump dry. You'll burn your pump up. That pump is cool that when the water passes to it. So you don't want to run it dry. Um, and cleaning the basin, uh, if you do want to clean that basin, you're going to remove the rocks, of course. You're going to remove the fountain feature. Um, you'll take the basin out, just dump all the sludge out, wash it out, put it back in. If you just need to clean that screen intake, just take your rocks off, take a shop back, screen to the uh, clean kind of suck the debris off of that screen. You don't need to take the whole basin out at that point. Uh, I guess you could run the water out and maybe use a shop vac and without removing the basin. With that, and that way you wouldn't have to uh, remove the fountain feature itself. Now these are just a few helpful tips that people will call me about. Um, we are here to answer any questions. That's one of the advantages of us. I've been doing this a long time. We have a whole lot of fountains here. You can't ask me anything that I haven't already answered. So uh, hopefully this will help you, and if you have any other questions, let me know. You can always reach me at 540-948-2239 or email me, Kenny, at southerngraceva.com.